Dr. Noon, this figure um, and this material will be up on the, the budget page? Yes, that is correct. Okay. These are sort of hot off the presses. We just ran the data this afternoon. So I wanted to make sure that you saw kind of where, where the staff were thinking. Any input or any thoughts uh, that have occurred to you? No, not right now. Sorry. Oh, I have one more thing when you're ready. Please. Well, please speak up. Please don't hesitate to speak up when you do have a question or a comment to make. Thanks. Dr. I visited a class that Niharika was in today, and I imagine she probably ran out of words. She was talking so much. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. You were great. Um, I, I just got word, um, like just this second, and it kind of goes back to your question. We sent out our intent to return forms earlier um, this month, and 100% uh, of the special ed teachers in the city of Falls Church intend to return to Falls Church next year. That has never happened before. So um, now that's their intention. <laughs> um, so we want to keep them happy. But um, that says a lot to me about um, the work that our special ed team William and uh, Rebecca Sharp have, have been doing. So um, kudos to Rebecca for, for her work and Seamus O'Connor as well. That's fantastic news. Um, all right. Any other thoughts on this topic? Um, we, do, we do have some folks who are here to give us their input as well, but I want to make sure we're asked our questions that we have at this point. Um, not seeing any, I would like to echo um, my colleagues and, and thank you all very much for the tremendous amount of work that clearly went into these answers to the car, our questions. And lots of questions came through, lots of very good answers, and lots of good information for us to consider as we're considering the budget. So thank you very much. Um, we really appreciate it. And nice job. So thank you. Um, so at this point, Dr. Noonan, I'll. Uh, we're heading to 3.02, and, and I'd like to invite uh, to the table representatives from uh, from Seek Peak and Eek, and I think that's uh, perhaps you, Mr. Sakura. <laughs> Please come to the table. I'd like to welcome Mr. Sakura too, and I have a little fun fact this evening that might be um, fun for you to know, but the year you started in um, the City of Falls Church Schools as a kindergarten teacher, you had a very special kindergartner in that classroom. You might remember. Niharika was in your <laughs> kindergarten <laughs> and now she's getting ready to take off for college yeah, so pretty impressive all the way through yeah. it's humbling and um, I also want to say uh, the unfunded needs it's it was a great question. Did Mount Daniel have a lot of respondents? And I did no lobbying. I honestly didn't discuss it all with, with any colleagues. Um, but thank you, Dr. Noonan, for extending that, you know, extending the opportunity for me to be able to respond to that. So um, that's great. I, and I do want to echo that. It's clear um, validation for the importance of our early education program at Mount Daniel. So, so thank you for everyone that replied to that. Um, this is going to sound like what Peek and Eek said. Um, once again, we support Dr. Noonan. Uh, Dr. Noon's budget, and we thank Ms. Michael and Mr. Bates as well as all of our other colleagues at Central Office um, for your work in creating a budget that's transparent, forward thinking, and provides teachers with competitive salary growth. Um, and thank you again, Mr. Reitinger and, and the other members of the board for echoing that importance of, of providing a step every year for teachers. Um, it goes a long way to, to speaking towards your appreciation for our professionalism and, and yeah, retention, and yeah, it's great. Um, Peek would also like to thank the school board for your continued work and support of our students, schools, and staff during the budget season and every day. Your commitment to providing staff with a full step and a 1% COLA next year is important and does send a clear message that the hard work and expertise exhibited by all of our teachers is valued and understood as integral to our school success. It's important to professional staff to know that fair and competitive compensation is a division priority. It really does. Peak fully supports the Falls Church City Schools placemat goals of IB for all, building a caring community and culture, and closing gaps. The superintendent's proposed budget this year provides funding and service to these goals through increased staffing in needed areas and expanded resources. Peak thoroughly endorses this effort. We acknowledge that there remain unfunded needs identified at all buildings across the district, and we trust that these will be addressed in the future. We appreciate Dr. Noonan's survey asking division leaders to prioritize several items that remained on this budget's unfunded list. This type of collaboration is essential and appreciated, continues to be. 
and Pete continues to work in partnership with the superintendent, the school board, and our school colleagues throughout the budget season and beyond. So thank you again for your time and energy and in service to our schools. Yeah, it really feels like a collaboration and a team effort, and, and it is not unnoticed by the staff at the buildings. So thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, just to say thanks, Mr. Sikora, appreciate you being here. Um, and uh, you, you do a great job. And congratulations again on your nomination for Teacher of the Year. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And Mr. Sikora, thank you for your comments and thanks for the feedback. We, it really does mean a lot to us to hear what you all think and be able to take that into account as we're doing our, our conversation and, uh, about the budget and really being sure that we're hearing what you and the staff think is really key for us. So yeah. thank you. Likewise, thank you. New collaboration society. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, all right. Mr. Yeah. Anderson, I, I just wanted to recognize, al although um, she isn't going to speak tonight, and that's fine because she's here to learn, um, we wanted to welcome uh, Ms. Autor uh, for uh, being here and also being one of the SAOs. Um, specifically, she's been a great band booster and supports that program incredibly well. Um, with respect, just since you're here, I'll mention um, in the budget again this year, uh, we do have a $5,000 line item for uh, replacement equipment. Um, and that has been an ongoing line item for the last three years, and I don't anticipate it um, stopping anytime soon, and as long as I'm here. Um, uh, we'll continue to include that replacement uh, line item for band equipment and music equipment. Um, this year, for example, um, Mary Jo West has spent a portion of that on guitars and gig bags, um, and last year she bought um, uh, some euphoniums and a couple other pieces of equipment. So she's been spending that money down in, in replacement. So um, I, I know that that wasn't a line item prior to my arrival, but we felt like uh, the band and the band boosters did a tremendous job advocating for the arts and thought it was a good thing to add moving forward. So thank you for being here. Um. Not seeing anybody else in the audience uh, from any of the SAOs. I guess I'll ask uh, Ms. Del Mar. Did we receive any written comments at all at this point? Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, are there any comments that have been sparked by what you've heard in, in anything since this, you know in the last couple of minutes? Otherwise, I would like us to go ahead and move to the next item. But I'll just ask. All right. Well then. Thank you again uh, for, for a tremendous amount of work and tr a great job to this point. And thank you, Mr. Sikora, for, uh, for your comments. And I think we'll move on to 3.04, the FY20 monthly monitoring report. And Ms. Michael. So first, I'd really like to thank Michelle Kopic. This uh, month, the work session was before the board meeting. So in addition to all of the great work that she did in terms of answering all the budget questions, we also had to complete all of the posting of our transactions in order to run this report. So for example, posting of all of the state revenue, which she does each month. So kudos to Michelle for all of her tremendous efforts, both on the questions and this monthly monitoring report. Um, so I'm going to start. This is the monthly monitoring report for month seven, which is January. And we're looking at the summary chart that's included on page one of the report. Um, it shows revenue and expenditures by major category, and it includes all of the following data, the revised budget, the actual revenue or expenditures, and the encumbrances, what are, which are orders that are placed. Um, what's the available budget? So how much is yet to be collected in terms of revenue or yet to be expended in terms of expenditures? And then the last column is the percent available. So I'm going to talk through this chart first. So when we look at other revenue on the top line, through January our other revenue received totals $272,279. Um, of this, $112,605 is from our school bus arm stop violations. And then $147,039 comes from tuition that we charge to families, both for Jesse Thackeray Preschool and then for families who live outside of the city who are enrolling students at George Mason High School. The next line is our use of fund balance. Um, that is funding that if we use is posted at the end of the fiscal year. State aid, the next line is tracking as we would have expected through January. Um, and just to remind the board, this year we did receive 154,000 in state technology grant funding um, that was from the prior year that we were expecting last year but got received this year. 
When we look at federal revenue received to date, federal revenue um, so far reflects funding for IDEA or special education and then Title IIA. When we look at Title IIA, we have been reimbursed for nearly 70% of the funding that we have budgeted for this year. And then for IDEA, what you see there is the first quarter's um, reimbursement of $115,315. Um, so just to remind the public listening, federal revenue is typically in a reimbursable grant format. So after we've had the expenditures, we submit a reimbursement request th through the state, and then we receive that funding. Um, at, at the end of the fiscal year, we do anticipate that we will get all of that funding that we've budgeted for those federal grants. And then the last revenue category is our interfund and government transfers. Um, historically, the transfer from our general government is posted in the last month of the fiscal year in June. Um, so we will receive 100% of that funding at the end of the fiscal year. Um, as we move down and look at the salary line, salaries are tracking consistently with last year. So we've had seven months of salaries for our 12-month employees, and five months of salaries are posted to date for teachers. And we pay our teachers over 12 months, so the pay that they'll get next July and August will be included in this year's FY20 expenditures. When we look at salaries as a percentage of budget, um, we have 54% available for salaries, which is exactly the same as the prior fiscal year. When we look at the benefits line, we're actually expending benefits slightly faster with last year, with 51.3% available. Last year at this point, we had 52.1% available. Um, with the exception of the Virginia retirement system, benefits are expended over the full fiscal year, but we do pay our expenditures to the Virginia retirement system over the school year. So for teachers, we'll make those payments only through June, um, from September through June of the 10 months. And then when we look at the other expenditure categories, on the summary chart, we've broken out all the other categories by contracted services, utilities, materials and supplies, capital replacements, and, and transfers and reserves. Um, when we look at those accounts, we're currently trending lower than we were last year. That's primarily due to last year at the very beginning of the fiscal year, we had additional expenditures for Mount Daniel that we didn't have this year. And when I've looked at those expenditures in those categories, they have not been tracking consistently year over year. Um, but we'll continue to monitor those as we go through the year. Um, and I do anticipate that we'll see an uptick in those expenditures as we move closer to the end of the fiscal year. And then lastly, when we look at our encumbrances or our orders that have been placed and not yet received, currently we have 1.9 million left in those orders. That is decreasing last month. It was 2.2 million. Um, and that, that has also been consistent with the prior years. So I'm going to move to the chart. Um, that looks at our revenue expenditures um, as compared to the two prior years. When we make sure I'm on the right page. So when we look at this chart, this chart is comparing our current year FY20 with 19 and 18, looking at exactly where we were at at the same point in time for the last three fiscal years. So when we look at that across all those years, um, you can see that when we look at revenue overall, we're at 91 or 91.8% yet to be collected as compared with 92.3% in the prior year and 926 So revenue is tracking pretty consistently this year with the prior two fiscal years. Um, on the expenditure side, when you look at our expenditures, we're really tracking exactly as we were last year with that 54% available. That's where you can see benefits were expending slightly faster with 51.3% available as compared to 52.1. And then when you look at the other expenditures that I just mentioned, you can see that we currently have 35.6% available as compared to 23.8% for the prior year. Um, so when you look at all of those charts, also included in the report, which we didn't post on the screen, um, are where we project to be at the end of the fiscal year. So I just want to walk through that just a little bit. Um, and I apologize that I didn't put it up on the screen. And when we look at revenue overall for the fiscal year, we're projecting that at the end of the year, we'll have 600,000 less in revenue than we budgeted. Um, that compares to a negative balance of 329,772 and 19. And we were actually had 1.2 million less in revenue that we budgeted in FY18. Um, on the expenditure side, at the same time, we're projecting to underspend by $1,429,481. Of that, 800000 is for contingency and reserves. So if we look at our salaries and benefits, um, overall salaries were underspent by 1.1% in FY19, and we're currently projecting that we're going to underspend on our salaries this year by 0.9%, so less than the prior year. 
When we look at benefits, um, benefits are actually being expended at a rate slightly faster than FY19. Um, in 